SketchUp is well known for its easy to use drawing tools. It's also well known for its limitations when it comes to the workflow of drawing out flat shapes and pushing them out into blocks. But what if I told you there are some secret tools in SketchUp that allow you to draw some pretty crazy shapes? Introducing SketchUp's solid tools. If they're not currently visible for you, you want to go into the tool palette and activate them with this tick box here. So what do these tools allow you to do? Well, most of working in SketchUp seems to revolve around drawing out flat profiles and pushing them out into 3D shapes and sometimes pushing things inward if you want to, say, drill a hole in something. Hey, mate. Hello. Do you want to say hello to people at home? Yes? No? I've got to record a video, mate. Let's get back to work. Now, this generally serves quite well for most of set design when what we are designing is often blocky by its nature. However, you can run into issues very quickly when you're tasked with modelling something a little bit more complex. So, let's have a look at what these tools do by running through their basic functions, and then we'll have a go at modelling something cool, which we'll probably use as the thumbnail. And if you want to jump straight to that chapter, I've labelled it Modelling Something Cool in the chapter markers in the video description. So, solids, what are they? Um, as far as SketchUp is concerned, it is a three-dimensional shape with no stray geometry and a complete sealed set of surfaces. So the idea is it would be watertight, all the joins meet together. So to demonstrate this, I have three cubes here, and the first one is made up of six sides that all meet each other perfectly at the edges to make a watertight shape. To confirm that this is considered solid by SketchUp, uh, if you click on it as a group and look in the top right corner, it will tell you that it is a solid group and not just a group. It'll do the same if it's a component, it will tell you it is a solid component. If you don't have this palette open, if you go to Window, Default Tray, Show Tray, it should pop up. And just make sure that you have the Entity Info activated. So if we look at the second cube here, it has a missing face, which means that it is not a watertight shape. And for that reason, if we click on it as a group, we can look in the top right corner here and it just says group, not solid group. And exactly the same can be said for the third cube, except rather than a missing face, it's got these two stray lines going through it. Now, solids don't have to just be cubes, they can be any shape within reason, as long as they are a fully sealed volume with no holes in it and no stray geometry. Are we following along? Probably. Let's move on to the tools. So, there are six tools to go through here, namely, outer shell, intersect, subtract, union, trim and split. That took a few takes to get right. So to demonstrate what these tools do, I have made a simple one meter cube here. And I've gone and made that a group, and in the top right corner, you can see that that is a solid group. So next we're gonna make a sphere. And to do that, what we're gonna do is make a circle with a 500 mil radius and 64 segments. We'll duplicate that upwards by an amount of, let's say, 600 mil. And then we'll turn the second cube upright by 90 degrees, click on the flat circle, click on the follow me tool, and then click on the vertical circle's face. And as far as I'm aware, that is the most straightforward way of making a sphere in SketchUp. Please, the love of God, Trimble, can you just please make some basic primitive tools? It would save everyone a lot of time, and it should be very basic. Once we have our sphere, we will select that and turn that into a group as well. And as you can see, that is now a solid group. So we're going to take our sphere and we're going to position it centered on one of the top corners of the cube. So you can see that they overlap. These two shapes overlap with each other. And I've turned on the shading here so you can see the shapes a little bit better. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both these shapes, copy them either with Control C or Edit Copy or Command C on Apple. And then we're going to go to Edit Paste in Place. This will paste those shapes in the same spot as they started. And for each one, I'm going to scale them down from the center using the Control key so that we have a 80% scale shape inside the original shape. So there's a slightly smaller cube and there's a slightly smaller sphere inside the pre-existing shapes. The reason for this will become clear in a little while. Also, just so you know, I will be flicking between normal view and x-ray view. The shortcut for that is K. Okay, last thing we're gonna do to our shapes here is we're gonna add a callout using the callout tool and we'll label this the first tool we're gonna to try out, which is outer shell. And then because we have six solid tools to try out, we want five duplicates of these. So we'll select all of our items here and we will duplicate them across five times. So we have six sets of shapes in total. And then we'll go through each of these labels and then we'll rename them as per our six tools. So just to remind you again, that is outer shell, intersect, union, subtract, trim, and split. Now, with our example shapes all set up, let's have a go at trying out our first tool, the outer shell tool. The outer shell tool, if we select a larger cube and the larger sphere and we click outer shell, what that will do is it will join all the largest extremities into one shape and all internal geometry will be removed. Okay, so quite simply what the outer shell tool does 
is it will make an outer shell out of those two combined shapes. Now, whenever you're using these tools, be aware that it is a destructive workflow. And what that means is you cannot go back and edit that inside that group. So the best bet is to keep hold of a copy of your original shapes as you go along. And this way, if you are asked to change something, you can go back to your original shapes, make an alteration, and then make your outer shell again. So that's quite a simple tool, but also very effective and hopefully very useful. Next tool is Intersect. So to demonstrate this specific tool, we're gonna remove the smaller shapes from this set, and we're only gonna use the larger shapes. So then we select our cube and our sphere, and we click Intersect, and as you can see, what that leaves behind is only the space in which both shapes overlapped or where they intersect. Very simple yet very effective. Third tool to demonstrate here is the union tool. So the union tool is fairly similar to the outer shell tool, except it will retain internal geometry. So that means you can use the union tool to make shapes with internal voids. So let's say you wanted to make a hollow cube. We can select our large and small cubes and click union, and that has made us this hollow cube. It is still a solid. All the edges meet and SketchUp can acknowledge that that is a shape, a solid shape with a hollow space inside. But, you know, it, it's retained that internal geometry, whereas the outer shell didn't. And we do exactly the same with the sphere. With the larger and smaller one, we can make a hollow sphere. Now, let's see what happens when we combine the hollow sphere and the hollow cube together and we have made a mess. Now, it's important to point out that actually these tools work differently depending on which way the face is orientated sometimes, and sometimes it's best to use a combination of these tools to get your desired effect. Now, we'll come back to this once we've gone through the rest of the tools. Next tool, subtract. So for this tool, we're gonna remove the smaller shapes again, and then we're gonna select one shape, then the next shape, so we have them both selected. And then we're gonna click subtract. So as you can see, it's subtracted one shape from the other. Now, keep in mind when you are selecting, you want to select the shape that you want to subtract first, and then you want to select the shape that you are subtracting from. This is of course very important, depending on which effect you're going for. So the best way to remember that is to click on the item you're subtracting and think to yourself, I'm subtracting that from that. So with this tool, we can either end up with a sphere with a section of cube cut out of it, or a cube with a section of sphere cut out of it. So have a little play around with it and see what you come up with. Tool number five, trim. So trim works a lot like subtract, where you are subtracting one shape from the other, but it retains your original shape. And this can be quite useful if you want to make some kind of contraption, for instance, where items slot together perfectly. And finally, we have our split tool. And what the split tool does is if we select our two shapes, we click split, and what that leaves us with is almost a combination of the subtract tool and the intersect tool. So you end up with the two original shapes with the overlapping space subtracted from them, and you end up with the intersected shape too. So as you can see here, we have a cube with a section of sphere taken out of it. We have the original sphere with the corner of the cube taken out of it, and we have that fraction of sphere that's left where the two shapes intersected. So we actually end up with three shapes. Are we all following along? Of course we are. Right, have a look at these shapes and see how you can combine them to get interesting effects. So remember the mess that we got into back when we were playing around with the union tool? What we can do here is we can go back, we can join the two smaller shapes using the outer shell tool. We can join the larger shape with the outer shell tool, and that gives us one larger and one smaller combination. We can select the larger and smaller combinations together, and we can use the union tool to make one overall shape with a hollowed out interior. So as an example of something you can make with these tools, we have here this column with a fluted shaft and curved surfaces on the header and the footer. So to make this column, I started with a cube at the top and a cube at the bottom, and I joined the two with a cylinder between them. Then I added this sort of chunky disc shape to make a little section of trim above the header and the footer. I will admit I used the round corner plug-in to get this nice rounded edge, but you could probably get the same result by using the follow me tool to make a profile on the side of your disc and then running that round the edge of the shape to get your nice rounded edge. Please Trimble, another request, can you please add a chamfer 
and fill its edge tool into the basic tool set. It's really basic, and I should not be having to install third-party software for that. Thank you, next. And then to make this rounded surface here on top of the base, I make a sphere and I position it to exactly where I want to shave off the corners on the top of that base. I do exactly the same for the header. And then finally, to make the little fluted details, I run a cylinder down the length of the shaft and then I create a rounded end to those thin cylinders, just making sure that I delete any internal faces to make sure that SketchUp registers it as a solid. And once I've made those cylinders, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it into a circular array so that we have them evenly spread around the whole column. And I'm going to join them all into one group and then make sure that within that group uh, everything's ungrouped so it's one solid mesh. Even though they're separate items, SketchUp sees it as one solid item that it can either add to or subtract from another shape. And then, before we proceed on to using any of the solid tools, remember that we want to make a copy of all these shapes and put them to the side in case we want to come back and alter the design in future. Now we have all our shapes in place, we're going to use the solid tools to create our column. So firstly, we're going to make the base, we're going to select the sphere and the cube, and we're going to use the intersect tool to round off the top of that base. And we can do exactly the same with the top. So we have a nice rounded base and header. And then next we're going to select the header, the footer, the shaft, and the little disc details. And we're going to use outer shell to combine all those items into one solid mesh. So finally, we want to take our cylinders and then we select them as well as the rest of the mesh. Click subtract and it has subtracted those flute details from the overall mesh. And hey presto, we have made a fluted column using the solid tools in SketchUp. So now we've got our column, and if you want to do something really clever, we can use the trim tool to break it into separate pieces. So what I've done here is I've made a cube, and I've sort of made it a little bit gnarly with a little bit of a crease at the top and the bottom, and I've pasted it into the middle of the column. So then what I can do is I can select that new cube and the column and I can click on split. And then what that does once I've moved that cube out of the way is it leaves me with three pieces of column that all join together nicely and I can separate those into separate groups and I can position those in a way that looks like the top section of that column has been knocked down. So this could be really cool if you're doing some kind of temple ruin set. So, as promised, what we're going to do is we're going to take these tools and we're going to make something cool with it, which will probably end up in the thumbnail that you may well have clicked on already. Now, just to let you know that this won't be a full step-by-step, -step, it's more just an overview of the tools that I'm using to make something like this in SketchUp. I'd be really interested to see what uh, other people have done with these tools. Um, if you've made something cool and interesting, by all means, send us a picture of it onto our Instagram here. So to get started, I thought it would be pretty cool to make some form of directional jet thruster thing using a set of spheres and then cutting shapes out of it to be where the jet thrusty stuff goes out. You can, as you can see, I'm an expert in sci-fi. And then to make the overall body of this kind of spaceship thing that I'm making, I've taken a sphere, I've elongated it, I've angled it a little bit, and I have shrunk the back end using the Fredo scale warp tool, which allows me to distort shapes in a way that the basic SketchUp tool set does not. And then I continue to use a combination of cubes and spheres to create our domed windscreen, to create the cutouts for various windows, to get, create the cutouts for the doors. And then I use the same techniques to make this kind of air intake shape on the side of the spaceship. And then I made some kind of louver shapes to go across it. And then I used the trim tool to trim them all down to the right shape and size to go inside that air intake. And then once I'm kind of happy with my spacecraft thing, I want somewhere for it to be. So we're going to take our column that we made earlier. I make a little circular array with that to give ourselves some kind of rotunda. And what I can also do is use our broken columns from earlier to place at the front so that from our view we can see into the rotunda. Next I want to make a header to go on top of these columns, so I make a circle from that same point of origin for our columns, and I break off a section, make a little curved cuboid shape thing that we've made as a block. I've given it a chamfer, and I select that alone, make that its own group, circular array it, and then we have a header, but of course we want the front 
to be all mangled up and broken, much like our broken columns. So, much like we did earlier, I can use the trim tool and our wonky cube to break those front sections into pieces and then place those pieces on the ground in the foreground. It would be lovely if SketchUp had some kind of physics simulation, but it's not at that level, let's be honest. We're not using Cinema 4D or Blender or Maya here, we're using SketchUp. So then I spread all those items around the floor to make a relatively convincing pile of rubble. I create the ground for the rotunda in a very similar way to what I've done the header, where I've made this sort of circular array of sections, and I've made all those sections into their individual blocks to then circular array them out and make our nice sort of floor space, really, with all its sort of grooves in there to suggest that it's some kind of ancient Roman ruin. And to make sure that you can see all those grooves, much like I've done with the header, I've used the round corner plugin to give it a chamfer. So, now I'm fairly happy with the layout of this, I want to render it up to make it look a bit sexy. Now, we're not going to go into too much detail about the rendering process here because it's not that kind of video. If you want to see more of that, click on this video up here because that will give you more insight into my personal methods for rendering. But, since we're here, I'll do a quick rundown of what I'm up to. So I'm going to allocate some materials to it, our spaceship is in like a sexy red, and we've got our sandstone finish for all our rubble and our columns, and of course I've applied a glass material for our domed windscreen. The lighting is done using a HDRI, meaning like a 360 degree sky dome, which gives a sort of realistic lighting setup based on where you're rendering it into. I've given the little jet thrusters a little bit of a fire effect coming out, which is basically a PNG of that kind of effect that I found on the internet, and I've placed it in there on a little as a little card and set it so it lights up so you get a little bit of ambient light from that. And yeah, and then I'll just sort of have a little play around with the lighting levels, render it out, add a little depth pass so I can add a little bit of uh, mist into the background, and then a little bit of Photoshop magic, and hey presto, we've got our sexy little render. Yeah, so that's Solid's tools, um, and we've made something quite fun with it. I'm very much aware that this is not a set necessarily, but hopefully it's given you the ideas to go and make some more ambitious shapes. We've learnt what all the tools do here, we've had a go at making something fun with it. Uh, of course this isn't something that I would go and get made in real life on most jobs that I get hired on, but it shows that you can make some quite fun stuff within the tools in SketchUp, so hopefully people have found that very useful. I would like to continue doing some videos like this with some of the other software that I use, such as Vectorworks, um, and eventually Rhino when I get a full license for it. If you found this particularly useful, do give us a like, comment, consider subscribing, and I hope to... Hello, mate. And myself and Salem here will see you again on the Set Design channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye. All right, mate.